Welcome, greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Yes, it's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, hello for all of you who are here present and live. If you are here, by all means, let me know. Well, of course. Hi, Mark. How are you? It's so good to have you here. Hello, Adrian. Thank you for being present. Uh, you, you have no idea what an incredible thing it is to be present, to be here. It takes a whole uh, a tribe to put this together. You know who's the tribe? Me, myself, and I, <laughs> right? We all have the tribe within us. And then we forget. We forget how able we are. We forget how much we can do. So this morning, I'm doing this 33-day challenge. Um, it's uh, a 33 day challenge to become lighter and happier, better. Hello, Rubik John, how are you? Um, and because of that, today is the 15th, so we did our 14th day today, and I was at the gas station pumping gas. And then it just came to me how often do we say, I can't? Because years ago, up to 10 years ago, we used to have attendants that tended to, especially women who would come and pump gas. They would uh, do the windows and check your oil if you need it, maybe 15 years ago. Uh, but nowadays, you can't even find an attendant at a gas station unless you go somewhere that has a garage, right? And that would part of our life, who we are. And how often do we say, I can't? So just yesterday, I got this wonderful, beautiful um, message that was a testimonial place on Yelp by one of my clients. And it, it was beautiful. He said that he came in for a consultation and he was so uh, drawn and liked what he heard that he signed up for a three month, which was a nine week session. And through this sessions, he truly evolved. And a work, the work that I do, it's truly evoke, helping a client see the best version of themselves. And the same time that I got this wonderful testimonial, I had an email that was uh, sent to me. And the email, the gist of it is, do you ever feel depressed because all I see you is happy? <laughs> well, let me say this. Oh, yes. I do get into low times. I get into times of frustration, especially because I am not tech savvy. And I tend to want things to be in order. And when I can't see it happening at the same time, I go into this, I can't mode. I can't see it. I can't do it, right? And yet, if I really wanted to, and if I didn't have the means or my office manager was not here, guess what happens? I go into the can mode. I fall into what can I do? How can I do to get my, the result that I need? And believe it or not, I can. So that said, how often do you go into that can't mode and forget all your gifts, forget all the trainings you've had that you probably have not been using as much? So Saul, who is the name of my client, and it's okay for me to say his name because he's not in the social media, by choice, wrote this beautiful Yelp and you can go to Yelp and see his testimonial, right? Um, all he needed 
was for me to help him evoke a part of his history, a part of history of his life that he had, he was not seeing it, not seeing his own gifts so that he can come to the part of embrace. I like for him to embrace and own it, own his gifts, own his talent, own the, the goodness that he has within himself so that he could evolve and blossom to all the fantastic training and traits he has within himself. So in through the nine weeks, it was a beautiful evolution. And what I like to say and remind, which I was reminded also this last weekend that I went through another training, another seminar. You know, we do these trainings and therapies and seminars and schoolings, not because we don't know, but sometimes it's so good to relearn, rehear the things that we already know. And that's what I do with my clients. It's the clients who uh, come here for, let's say, uh, hello, Henry, clients who come in for making a change either in their body or not, what we call this somatic healing. And what somatic healing is, is this holistic way of connecting the mind and the body. Because the body truly gives us information, our body, when we have a pain, when there is a discord, it, it lets us know where the disconnect is. So I help my clients tap into their body, tap into their um, self to recognize what do I need to shift? Where is my discord? Where do I feel disconnected? And thank you, Henry. Thank you. Um, thank you for seeing me as a woman. <laughs> and uh, that's the part that when I get into my funk, I forget not only the womanhood within myself, the humanness. I feel disconnected when I believe I'm not delivering the message. So this morning, I felt empty. I did. It's like, how am I supposed to serve my clients? How can I show up for you? And by showing up for you is also letting you see that I do go into funks. I do go into my I can't. I do all that. But then I turn my computer on and I see this beautiful testimonial. I go to an event and I'm standing there with a colleague of mine and someone from the long, from long time ago comes and says, hi, Lisa, do you remember me? And I look at her tag and I say, your face is so familiar, but I can't put two and two together. And she said, over six years ago, I brought my daughter to you. And you helped her. And today she is thriving and she's going to law school. And thank you for helping her. So that is how I show up each and every day. And I remember that I too have my own evokes. That I have to go to my past history and instead of staying at my funk, because my funks are very short-lived. I am trained enough to come out of my funks and not go into depression. And there are times that it's sad and I turn my sads into funks so I can evolve out of there faster. And this is years of training. 
but it doesn't mean that I don't have those low times or blues times or funk times. Remember, I have experienced domestic abuse. I have experienced the bullying. I have experienced the being in so many down situations, financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, in weight-wise, in every-wise. But I also have the training, the experience, not only to bring myself up to stand up again faster, but also help my clients see that beauty in themselves. So, and it was so heartwarming for this mother hug me and say, thank you for helping my daughter. That for someone like Saul, who in his, in his uh, in way, he truly is a celebrity. <laughs> he is a celebrity. And so many who come to me and that he has referred. But when they come over here, it's not the status and the titles that they wear. It's the person that walks in the store. It's the person and the human that I help. So the metaphor that I was doing this morning, pumping gas, is oh, how much we forget to fuel our own tank. Hmm. So let me share you, share with you another thing. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Mark, um, Remember two weeks ago, maybe now three weeks ago, I went to uh, Puerto Vallarta to fuel my tank. Two days of sunny, bright days, and then three days of rain and storm, right? So the three days that I had to stay put, I was so disappointed first until I recognized on the third day, as the sun is coming up, wow, I fueled my tank. I fueled my tank by watching a lot of movies and how I saw the movies that few of them that I'd already seen in a different perspective and different light that it truly resonated with me. It was like I was stuck in a room to see the same movies with a different perspective and a different message. So today, as I am pumping gas, I saw pumping gas with a whole different perspective. So I'm asking you, how often do you do things over and over, over and over, because you are in this cycle of habitual autopilot, without stopping and saying, how can I give a different perspective or a different spin to what I am doing today? Hmm? It's just pumping gas. It's watching movie that I've seen before. As Tony Robbins says, if you have already seen this movie and you've watched it again and again, get over it. Shut the, shut the TV off, not the shut something else off, but shut the TV off and go do something that is more fun. But by being stuck in that room, I got so uncomfortable that through my uncomfortable position, watching Joe Black, I cried and I remembered my father dancing with him and shedding a tear of reminiscing. This little girl came out and cried for missing her father. By pumping gas, I saw all the things that I keep saying I can't and how much I can. So my question comes back to you. How may I serve you? The things that you believe you can't, 
and how may I serve you to shed a light and remind you all the things that you can. So the things that you think when you are sad, you have to change and shift coming from sadness out. Why? Why not embrace that moment? Being stuck in a room watching the same movie. Why not be one with your sadness and come through the sadness? You know, the caterpillar that comes through that tightness, the baby that has to come through the canal of the mother in order for her or him to be born. Even the butterfly that comes through the caterpillar. Did you know that butterflies cannot see the beautiful wings they have? The colorful, beautiful wings that we see it? As humans, we go and capture butterflies and put them in a glass to hold on to them and turn it into this museum? Do we give life to that 24 hour beautiful butterfly or we capture it so we can, or we can see the beauty? Why? Why not hold, watch it, see the beauty and then allow the butterfly to fly? So in a way, we give the wings back to them while we enjoy the beauty of their wings. We're all here for the duration that we are supposed to be here. There is no right, there is no wrong. Really, there is no right, there is no wrong. I don't know how long I'm here you don't know how long you are supposed to be here or what our destiny is. But there is no wrong or right. Each one of us has this part of E, which is the evoking the past, the history. So our history can be for however long we are meant to be here for. So today, I want you to look at your beauty, knowing that you matter, the butterfly matters, pumping gas matters, seeing a movie for the third time, fourth time matters, being present right here, right now matters. Just be and say to yourself, I am grateful to me. I'm grateful to me. I am grateful to this body that houses me and shields me and protects me. I am grateful to the sound mind I have. We may not all be geniuses or Einsteins, but we are present. We are here in whatever form or shape. A long time ago, I learned that I am dyslexia. I have a dyslexia, but I am not dyslexia. It is not a weakness. It's just something about me. And it, the power is to learn that about me and know that I, yes, it's dyslexia that I have or cancer that I had or ovarian cyst that I had that I heal through hypnotherapy. And that became my tool to help my clients. Anger management is a tool that I help my clients. Being a domestic abuse consultant is a tool that I help my clients. So those are all tools. Those are not me. Yeah. I is one of the most powerful tools you have. The I that adds one single word 
in the dictionary that means more than many other words in there. And so many things start with I, because without the I present within you, there is no you. So I want you to honor your I. And hello, Abigail, how are you? Um, uh, hello, Arina John. Hi, uh, mental capture in the mind. Yes, Henry, mental capture in the mind. So today, being uh, here, the, being present, I want to gift you today's message. Today's message of how I use the Evoke Embrace Evolve with many of my clients that this is the pattern that I take them through. The program, the nine week program of the transformation is helping them see the best version of themselves, shift the things that they no longer want or need or is paining them so that I help them help them see the best within them which is within you right and that's what attorneys do for you that's what cpas do for your bookkeeping accounting attorneys do that with the problems that you have and they solve it they take it either to a lawsuit or the court system but they find solutions for you and it's the same thing with a hairdresser you go in and you say i don't like my hair they say what do you want you say i want a shorter cut i want to feel this so in a way what i do with my clients is what do you want in life what is where you want to feel better in your body, in your heart, in everything. So coming to heal within is helping you heal within you. And thus the name of our company. Everything else is just you seeing yourself in a different light. There is all kinds of seasons, right? And this is a part of the somatic healing, the holistic healing, the alternative healing. The same way as I tapped within my body to heal my ovarian cyst and recognizing why the ovarian cyst was there. It's helping you embrace the parts that may be in a funk, may be in a pain, either emotional, physical, so that you, I shed the light and through hypnosis, which is tapping into the subconscious mind, the most powerful part of who we are, the reservoir, and shift the patterns and make the change. Feeling better, healthier, stronger, and knowing that there is a difference between sadness and depression. Because the person who is sad, who is in a funk, I know I can come out of it. That when I am in a funk, there is a reason and I can come out of the loop. And the someone and someone who is sad they know there is a reason that they are sad and they believe they can come out of that sadness and tap into their joy and the laughter and do things because sadness and funk is temporary but the ones who are in depression or feeling depressed don't believe that they can come out of it so it's the belief system. Once we change the belief system, once we change and help the pattern, which is the blueprint, then 
we come to hope and light and stepping into it. So allow me to help you step up, show up, and say yes to you. Sending love your way. I don't know what time it is, Henri, but bonjour or bonsoir. I don't know where you are. Thank you for being present and showing up every week and being a part of my tribe. One day, I hope we will meet. So, Arine, how can someone find what they want in life if they don't know? Mm, what a great question. Knowing is exploring. Uh, sometimes, I got to tell you this, and uh, I have, I am on career number seven. I went from different careers and thinking that this is the career, this is the best career for me. And the first career that I had out of, uh, actually I was in high school, that I took an ROP class and it was for dental assisting. So, and I loved dental assisting. And I continued the ROP class and started working at a dental office, actually in Pasadena. And the dentist loved the work that I was doing. And I loved being a dental assistant. And he asked me to go and become a dental uh, hygienist. Uh, guess what? Uh, I, although I loved being a dental assistant, when I went to college, and that was right before college, I went to college and I started taking classes, chemistry and biology and everything to go into the light of dental hygienists. Although I, and while I was doing dental assisting work with him part time and going to college, <laughs> guess what? I started flunking the classes. I was not good in chemistry. I would sit in a chemistry class and the whole class would finish. I would come out, study, go get an F. And if you think that did something good for my uh, psyche or telling me that I was a good student or not, mm -mm. Uh, then I took the biology and I started flunking biology and I was not good in biology. So formulas and biology and everything, I was not good at. And the results for that was I could not become a dental hygienist. Because of the classes, I could not finish. So I got out of those classes and I took classes, which was sociology. It was logic. It was... Uh, the rest of the classes that it was more mental, English, writing, essays. And I was thriving in those. Although my grammar was not good, basic English was not good. And then I would make a lot of mistakes in English because I didn't even know I was dyslexic at age 18 or had dyslexia. I was not dyslexic. Well, yeah, you get the point. But understanding that, it's like, wow, here is my strengths built on your strengths. If it is helping someone or writing is a good skill that you have, hone your writing. If it is art, hone your art skills. If it is connection, if it is marketing, take classes, take programs that helps you hone that part. You have to know what you love doing, what you have passion in doing. So through the years, the careers that I had, every single one of them was for me serving and helping people. And as I've said many times, my father said, at last you found what you're good at and it's the longest relationship you've had which is serving and helping in a more feminine, 
loving way. I may not be the best hypnotist, but I am a very good hypnotherapist and a coach, helping people with the whole of the person, right? So I'm, I'm not good at stage. I don't even go into hypnosis fast. Although I can, I drop in fast. <laughs> so it's knowing what you're good at, what you love, and hone that tool, that experience, and that part of you. I hope that answers this question. Uh, smart cookie here. <laughs> Thank you. That's how I felt before I got my MBA. Amen. Congratulations. And yes we are all masters in something we just have to find what we are ready to hone our expertise in and enjoy doing it over and over over and over thank you i hope doing a great service to people you have integrity thank you sir thank you um i hope today's message resonated with many of you and thank you for being present god bless you and may the universal light surround you no matter where you go step up step forward no matter where we go that's where we are show up because you matter see you next week <laughs>